Over the years, there have been dozens of skateboarding movies, but it's pretty rare that a skateboarding movie comes along that actually does skateboarding justice. You can tell that most of the time when skate movies are made, the people involved have no idea about skateboarding, which makes them super hard to watch if you're somebody who actually skates. How do you do, fellow kids? What? Now, I'm not exactly a film critic, but I am a skateboarder with a lot of free time. So I decided to put together a list of the best skate movies to watch. If you feel like I left any good ones off the list, just leave a comment so other people can see it. Also, I'm gonna leave links in the description to places where you can watch them. I tried to find free links, but some of them you are gonna have to pay for. Also, I spent a lot of time watching or re-watching movies to make this video. So just do me a favor, leave a like. It really helps out my channel. And with that said, let's just get right into the video. Lords of Dogtown is one of the most iconic skateboarding movies out there. Now, it's supposed to be based on a true story, but I wasn't around back then, so I don't really know how much of it happened. I'm sure the general outline is real, but they probably just exaggerated certain things just for the sake of the movie. It takes place in Southern California in the 70s, around the time skateboarding first became popular. The movie is based around the whole Zephyr team, which included Stacey Peralta, Tony Alva, and Jay Adams. The movie was also written by Stacey Peralta, and you can tell that the movie was made by someone who actually skates. It basically just follows skateboarding and how it came about. Since the movie takes place, just after polyurethane wheels got invented, it really focuses on the whole era of skating pools and you're almost guaranteed to want to go skate a backyard pool after watching it. It's definitely hard to show skateboarding accurately while still forming a plot that makes for a good movie, but overall, I think Lords of Dogtown did a pretty good job at it. Most skateboarders would probably agree that Lords of Dogtown is a pretty good movie, and even if someone doesn't skate, I could still see them liking it. I think Lords of Dogtown was one of the first skateboarding movies to actually do skateboarding justice, so if you haven't already seen it, then I definitely recommend watching it. All This Mayhem is a skateboarding documentary made by Vice back in 2014. I know it's technically a documentary and not a movie, but whatever, close enough. It follows the Pappas Brothers, who were two of the top vert skaters in the 90s. A lot of young skateboarders might not know about the Pappas Brothers, and I'm gonna be honest, I didn't either until I saw this, but I saw it when it first came out. I didn't just watch it just for this video. I had seen it before this video. Anyway, they were really good at the time and they were definitely up there with like Tony Hawk, Bob Burnquist, Danny Way, all the top dudes at the time, they were up there on the same level. They were two of the best vert skaters and they were also two of the first major names to come out of Australia. I will say that the documentary is kind of sad and it shows what can happen when the skateboarding lifestyle is really taken to the extreme. I won't give any spoilers, but if you watch the documentary, you'll definitely see what I'm talking about. Now, when all this mayhem was first released, it got mixed opinions because it kind of goes after Tony Hawk for being the first person to land the 900. I'm not gonna go into the details of it, but if you do watch it, just keep in mind that you're only getting one side of the story. If you end up watching it and want to get the other side of the story, Transworld did a full interview with Tony Hawk about it that's also worth checking out. Even if you're not into vert skating in particular, I still think it's a pretty interesting documentary to watch. So even though Grind only got an 8% on Rotten Tomatoes, and I don't think it was made by actual skateboarders at all, I still think it's worth watching. Grind is about a group of skaters trying to go pro by following around a skate demo tour on a summer road trip, basically like every other teen comedy out there. It's kind of funny how cliche the movie is, it's almost like they set out to make the most stereotypical skateboarding movie they could. A lot of the skating clips don't even make sense, and the same thing goes for the script, but that's also kind of what makes it so good in the first place. You can tell that the actors in the movie don't actually skate, but there are cameos by Bam Margera and a really young Ryan Sheckler, and also a few other pros. Maybe I just like it because it was one of the first skate movies that I watched growing up, but I feel like Grind is a movie that every skateboarder should watch. I'll admit that it's pretty bad, but it's almost so bad that it's good, if that makes sense. Street Dreams is one of the more accurate skateboarding movies out there. It follows an up-and-coming street skater that's trying to go pro. In the movie, the main character, who's played by P-Rod, is working on a street part, going on trips, and trying to win contests, which is kind of how it is for a lot of skaters. Most of the cast is made up of pro skaters, and they even go to a few famous spots and parks in the movie. They hit the DC Plaza in Ohio, and they also hit the skate park at Tampa. It also has some of the best skateboarding, which makes sense since the cast is made up almost entirely of pros. And unlike some of the other skate movies, they don't only film skate clips from the waist down, since the people in the movie can actually skate. I will say that even though the plot of the movie is a bit more accurate than some of the other skateboarding movies, it's still a little cheesy. 
Again, it's hard to make a good skateboarding movie that's accurate and still interesting to watch. So for what it is, I don't think it's too bad. Street Dreams was produced by Rob Dyrdek, so it makes sense that it's a little more accurate than a lot of the other skate movies out there. When it first came out, it didn't do that well because it was only in a few theaters, but I really feel like if Netflix was more popular at the time, then it would have done way better. Now, I'm not saying that it's a Hollywood blockbuster, but as far as skate movies go, I thought it was pretty decent. Mid 90s is an indie style coming of age skateboarding movie that was written and directed by Jonah Hill. I didn't even know that Jonah Hill skated, but according to Jenka Magazine, he grew up skating and the movie does seem like it was made by skateboarders. Now, since mid 90s just came out a few years ago, most skateboarders probably know about it. Almost all of the main actors are skateboarders and there's even a few pros in the movie. As you probably could have guessed by the name, mid 90s takes place in 1990s Los Angeles. It follows the journey of a 13 year old who finds out about skateboarding and starts hanging out at his local shop with a few older skaters. Rather than just making it about someone trying to go pro, it shows what it's like for someone who's just starting out and how it is trying to make your way into a group. Like a lot of coming of age movies, it doesn't really have a plot, but it does kind of show what it's like to grow up as a skateboarder. Also, mid 90s arguably has one of the best soundtracks out of all the other skate movies on this list. The movie definitely seems like it was made by actual skateboarders, and personally, I thought it was pretty good. Most skateboarders have probably already seen mid 90s because it's so recent and it was so hyped up when it first came out, but if you haven't seen it yet, then I definitely think it's worth the watch. Oh my f God. Is he fing dead, yo? Skate Kitchen is another skate movie that kind of has an indie vibe similar to mid 90s. Now, unlike mid 90s, Skate Kitchen takes place in present day New York City, which as you know, is on the opposite coast. Skate Kitchen is essentially a movie about a girl skater without any friends who gets welcomed into a group of girl skaters who live in the city. Then of course, her parents don't approve of it and they want her to stop skating, but she doesn't want to, so they kick her out and she moves in with her friends. I'm not gonna go over the whole movie, but if you're into coming of age films, then you'll probably like it. It's cool that Skate Kitchen is about a group of girl skateboarders because let's be honest, skateboarding is made up predominantly of guys, so sometimes girls can be a little underrepresented, especially when it comes to skateboarding movies. Another cool thing about Skate Kitchen is that basically the entire cast skates, and other than Jaden Smith and a few others, most of the cast aren't even professional actors. The Bones Brigade documentary is another skateboarding movie made by Stacey Peralta. The documentary shows how the Bones Brigade was formed and basically just how Power Peralta came to be. Now, depending on when you started skating, the Bones Brigade might not seem like a big deal, but it definitely played a major role in the way skateboarding developed. The Bones Brigade was the first team that brought together the top guys from different parts of skateboarding. At the time, they were winning just about every contest and they were in almost every magazine. Also, the guys on the team were some of the biggest innovators in skateboarding, and they were the ones that invented a lot of the tricks that people do today. Some of the team members included Tony Hawk, Steve Caballero, Rodney Mullen, Lance Mountain, Mike McGill, and Tommy Guerrero. I mean, just those guys alone invented like half of the tricks in skateboarding. Overall, even though it's technically a documentary and not a movie, I still think it's really cool to watch. Teachers would reach out, is he autistic? Or, I, I don't know. Skateboarding, what it represented, the ability to create, to express myself, it became my voice. Thrashin' was one of the first major skateboarding movies made. It came out in 1986, and I've heard a lot of older skaters saying that this is the movie that got them into skateboarding. I don't know how else to describe it other than saying that it's very 1980s. Thrashin' had all of the top pros at the time, including Tony Hawk, Tony Alba, Christian Hasoy, and Steve Caballero. The Red Hot Chili Peppers also make an appearance and apparently Johnny Depp was almost in it too, which would have been pretty cool to see. To give a rough summary of the movie, it's basically about a group of skateboarders who are pretty nice and mellow and they go up against a group of gnarlier skaters who are kind of mean and they wear denim jackets with the sleeves cut off. It's kind of hard to explain, but it's definitely worth watching the movie. Now, I just watched Thrashin' for the first time for the sake of this video, and even though it's a pretty dramatized version of what skateboarding is like, I still thought it was pretty good.
So that basically does it for this video. Definitely check out some of these movies if you haven't seen them already. Some of them are actually really good, and even the ones that aren't that good are still pretty funny to watch. Also, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, all that good stuff, and thanks for watching.